Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here, and welcome back to another conversion video. This time we're going to be looking at creating some great coat wearing infantry for your Astra Militarum forces. Now there's some great regiments that we can use as examples. These are, there's Armageddon Steel Legion, there's Vostrians, there's Valhallans. Um, so if you want to kind of create those kind of miniatures, you tend to have to buy the metal versions. And it's quite difficult to do that if you want a large force, very heavy. You can get third-party components, but some tournaments and competitions say that you can't use a certain percentage of non-Games Workshop products. So I thought, well, how can we go about converting um, great coat-wearing infantry uh, out of plastic? Now, I'm not going to be converting any specific regiment. I'm just going to be showing you how you can go about making something that looks like they're wearing a great coat. And you can apply these and paint these up however you want to represent them. So, let's get started. Let's start off by taking a look at the completed conversion. For this miniature, I have used the Free Guild Archers kit as my basis, as well as some components from the Militarum Tempestus and the Cadian Shock Troops kits. For these extra components, I would recommend sourcing them individually from a bit supplier or asking around your friends if you can raid their bits boxes. As I've already mentioned, the Free Guild Archers will act as the legs and torso of your conversion. Their coats are perfect for our needs, but they will require some modifications to make them viable. First of all, we'll need to remove any plastic seams from around the ankles and feet that give the appearance of our guardsmen wearing low shoes. These areas can be easily removed using a rounded hobby file or a knife. By flattening out the area, we give the appearance of a much higher boot. Some of the coats of the Free Guild Archers have pleating in both the front and back of the torso. These will need to be filled in and smoothed over. To do this, you will need a putty of some sort. I would recommend using a liquid filler, like liquid green stuff for this task, but if you don't have access to those, you can use a two-part putty instead. Now the material that I'm using here is called Procreate, and it's a two-part putty, much like green stuff, although I do find that this is much easier to work with. So use a knife to cut away two small parts. Remember to keep your tools moistened whenever you're working with putty to prevent it from sticking to the blades. Once cut away, mix the two parts together thoroughly until you have a consistent grey colour. With the putty mixed, use a sharp knife to cut it down into thin strands. Then you can use these strands to fill in the gaps. Make sure you use plenty of water on your tools and fingers when smoothing things over as you don't want to accidentally pull the putty out of the gap. Continue to fill in all the pleats on the torso this way before moving on to the next step. For the arms of our guardsmen, we'll be using the trusty Cadian Shock Trooper kit. This will give us a set of arms holding a last gun that fit the torso nicely. However, the Cadian arms feature flak armour shoulder pads which you may feel look out of place against the lightly armoured torso. Therefore, if you wish to remove these pads, you will need to start off with a set of clippers. Use these to remove the larger portions of the pad until you have the rough shape and size of a shoulder. Once you are happy with the size, you can then use a file or a knife to smooth off and round out the shoulders, giving them a much more realistic cloth appearance. Once both shoulder pads have been completed, you can then go ahead and glue them to the torso. Next up we have the head. I've opted to use one of the helmeted heads from the Militarum Tempestus kit. However, before we can use this on our miniature, we first of all need to remove some of the ornate detailing from the helmet, as it looks a little bit too ostentatious for our lowly guardsmen. This task is a little too fiddly to achieve using a hobby file, so I'd recommend using a knife instead, to very carefully cut away some of the gilding of the helmet to give it a much more mundane appearance. Once we've removed these details, we will want to ensure that our neck joint is the correct size before we glue it to the torso. The Tempestus torsos have a much deeper neck joint than our torso does, so we'll need to trim away the ball joint on the bottom of the head. As you're trimming away with your knife and clippers or smoothing out with your file, keep testing the fit against the torso to ensure that you're getting the best possible fit. If you're having trouble getting a snug fit, you may also find that you need to trim away parts of the neck joint as well. Once you feel that the neck and the head have a good join, you can then glue them together. Now this next step is an optional one, so if you're not comfortable with sculpting, feel free to skip it. If you're happy to play around with some putty, then you'll want to start off by mixing together and flattening some out, much like we did earlier. Once mixed, you'll then want to cut out two small panels of 4cm by 2cm using a sharp knife. These squares will serve as knee pads for our guardsmen, which will help to bulk out the lower legs, giving them a more sci-fi appearance. To attach the panels to the legs, use a damp brush to pick them up and lightly place them in position on the miniature. 
Then, using a sculpting tool, carefully shape the pad around the leg and gently press it into place. Remember to keep your tools wet to prevent the putty from sticking. After allowing the putty to cure overnight, you can then finish off your guardsman by attaching some equipment to his belt. Once again, I have sourced components from the Cadian Shock Troops kit for this. And here we have the completed Astra Militarum Infantryman. Now I've tried to keep this tutorial as generic as possible to allow you to make your own head and equipment swaps to represent already established regiments or your homebrew regiments. For example, you could use Skatari Ranger or Wildwood Ranger heads to represent Miasmin Red Cowls. Alternatively, you could add some putty to the heads from the Free Guild Outriders kit and use them to give your miniatures a more Vostrian appearance. Either way, there are lots of human scale components available from Games Workshop kits, so don't be scared to try out different parts from your bits box and see what works best. And so that concludes this video on making great coat wearing infantry for your Astro Militarum forces. Now if you enjoyed this video, please do let me know in the comments below and also leave me your suggestions for other conversions you would like to see me tackle. Now if you're interested in supporting this channel, you can do so by checking out my Patreon page, which you can find a link to in the description below. Now from there, you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which just really helps me in producing future content. So the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.